Hi, welcome to the Personality Hacker Podcast. My name is Joe Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. A subject that has caught and captured our attention lately is about generations. The way that the generation that we were, were that we were raised in, generations is defined by a certain time period in which you're born, impact us and are a node in the system of our personality. So we've been studying a lot of, I mean, we've been watching things like National Geographic came out with a great documentary series on Gen Xers, Generation X, which is technically what you and I both are, is Generation X. We've been watching a lot of things on baby boomers. Uh, We watched uh, some stuff on millennials. And we've been watching content to study people at certain generations. So a show that we've caught up on at this point and have actually quite enjoyed is a show called Girls on HBO. And Girls is very much about millennials. It's been really fascinating to watch. Now, I don't, uh, somebody argued with me not that long ago, and I, I mean, actually, I didn't argue with them. They just made the statement because I actually agree. Most of the people in Girls are pretty immature and they're just trying to figure things out. And they're not necessarily like the best representation of the millennial mindset, <laughs> which is accurate. However, there are certain things that I think are very distinctly millennial. And one of those things we were noticing is a heightened sense of self-awareness. Yeah, Millennials seem to have more self-awareness at a younger age than Gen Xers or boomers. That's been my observation. And the other thing I noticed is that millennials have a sense of self-awareness earlier, but they don't necessarily have maturity to go along with it and so there's there's a a, just a um i don't know like a a tendency for some millennials to almost excuse or mitigate any bad behavior by saying well it's okay because i'm aware of it so the self-awareness has come on much earlier than it has for say previous generations i mean i think gen xers got really self-aware but they did it in like their 30s a sense of self-awareness started happening. There was, I mean, I, I, even when they were younger, I think you can watch movies like Reality Bites and there's like somewhat of a sense of self-awareness, but it was still very much about like getting a job or it was more about, you know, having inherited this, you know, this, this world and the cynicism that they have around the politics and the corruption that they've inherited. Whereas with millennials, it feels very much about the self-awareness. And so... With boomers and and then with Gen Xers, when when people of these generations became self aware, it usually happened w- like concurrently with growing maturity. It happened concurrently as they matured, they became more self aware. So when they were self aware, they used self awareness as a tool to not explain their behavior away, but to actually go, oh, maybe I should do something about that. But millennials are very postmodern, so it's like they come out of the hatch with a sense of self awareness. And, and I'd love to, of course, talk about different generations. We'll probably do a whole podcast or maybe even a podcast series on generations soon because we're so fascinated by the topic. But just to, just to really kind of flesh out this idea that because the self-awareness has happened before the maturity happened, then there is, it, it becomes an excuse. It becomes like, well, it's okay for me to behave like that because I know I'm behaving that way. Yeah, with for the let's say example, and these are in general terms. Obviously, don't don't write and be like, well, you. This is all the exceptions to what you said. Just take what we're saying in general terms. The Boomer generation, the greatest generation, the Boomer generation. You know, World War II generation, the greatest generation. It was a lot about duty and honor and serving your country and being a part of something bigger than yourself. And and same thing with the Boomers. It was more of a there was some individuation there. I think that the counterculture in the 1960s pushed back against some of the ideals that America had brought up to that point. Or the West, it was in Europe too. We had some countercultural pushback all over the world, I think. And I think that in the midst of pushing back against things, you know, boomers might have gone through some growth during that time. But I really think that for generations previously and people previously, this idea of being self aware, when we talk about self awareness, what are we actually talking about? We understand we're ourselves and we're different than other people. What do we mean by self aware? It's an expanding worldview, I think, is what we're talking about seeing a picture that's just bigger than what we have seen in our day-to-day lives. We start to take into account more and more territory, more and more worldview, more and more perspective of what's happening and our place in that world. 
Like, where do we show up in the midst of that? We're not necessarily the center of the universe anymore. Now we're playing a bigger picture. So when we talk about self-awareness, for the greatest generation, for example, their self-awareness was, I am myself, and my awareness is that I plug myself into joining the army to fight in World War II, as an example. And that was that was the worldview. That was the expansion there. And you, and you can see during that time period that a lot of people during that time got a bigger sense of the world. They were shipped off to Europe or Southeast Asia to fight a war and exposed to various different cultures they had never experienced before. That was brand new to them. And it really altered the course of humanity, I think, with the world colliding in these ways. And I think it set us up basically for the next generations to come after that to have a more global focus. Well, let's fast forward. Let's just zoom really fast. I know I'm kind of covering a lot of territory here. Zoom back up to the millennials again. Millennials are born into a world. I mean, the the oldest millennials were born around the early 80s, the early 1980s, according to most, you know, most metrics of how they measure generations. They're born in the early 80s. And by the time they are, the oldest millennials are coming online through puberty, the internet, the commercial internet in the early 90s is already starting to be established. And now that's part of their maturing teenage formative years, understanding that the entire world is at their fingertips. And you take that into younger millennials, social media is coming online in the early 2000s, mid 2000s. It's this idea that we're all connected. There's a global community. There's no longer these arbitrary lines between nations and things. And this awareness of a global community is so pervasive from the time you're very young. It's not like you have to, gotta, you have to get into an airplane or a boat and go fight a war to see the rest of the world or see stock footage brought back you know, and you see it weeks later of what happened in Germany and Hitler and stuff on the big screen at the movie theater, you're seeing real-time updates on Twitter and Facebook. You're, you're getting a sense of what's going on on the planet while it's happening. You're seeing stuff unfold in front of your eyes with 24-7 news cycles, social media, and all this. And you get the sense of, wow, I'm super aware. I'm more aware than anybody else in the history of the world has ever been in our world right now. And I, And to some degree, that's true. You are if you're a millennial listening, you are the most aware generation that's ever existed. And I think what ended up happening for people in the previous generations is as they got a sense of awareness of the world and the global things that are happening, it was accompanied by, like what Antonia said, mentioned earlier, the sense of maturity, the sense of understanding your place there, understanding how the world is working. And it often accompanied after you had become an adult. You didn't get shipped off to war as a 12-year-old. It was after you were an adult, the greatest generation went to war and learned about the world and became more aware. So they had the maturity to tether to the new awareness they had gained. They weren't just brought up with this awareness without any kind of maturity to tether it to. Right. It happened through age and experience. Now, we're talking about trends here. There, it's not that everybody of every generation is at this point self-aware. Yeah. It's not that everybody of previous generations before the millennials gained self-awareness with maturity. And it's not that every millennial that is self-aware is immature. So we're just talking about trends of behavior here. Macro. Yes, very zoomed out. <laughs> and the reason why we're talking about this is to actually illustrate a phenomenon that is becoming more and more common. Now, there are people who of you know previous generations, Gen X, boomers, didn't gain self-awareness until the internet age happened and then they like millennials gained awareness through this new technology and maybe it didn't accompany a sense of maturity i've seen that too and i have seen millennials that have self-awareness and maturity coming online pretty quickly the point is though that this study this observation this fascination we've had with generations triggered a thought for us that we hadn't really thought about before as much and that is self-awareness does not equal personal development. We talk about a need for awareness and self-awareness in personal development because you want to be self-aware of your behaviors. You want to be able to trace back some of your behaviors to the right sources. You want to be able to be, uh, you know, it's not self-consciousness like an embarrassment, but you want to you want to understand the impact you're having in the world. You want to understand how you're showing up. You want to make sure that the people you're influencing, you're doing it in a positive way. So you want to have greater awareness in general. In fact, a lot of personal development, that's all they teach you is awareness of being aware, being present, being aware of your environment, understanding who you are as you show up there. So self-awareness is a big part of the personal development path. 
but it doesn't equal growth. As in, it's a stage, it's a phase of it, it's not the end game. It's not like the destination is to be self-aware. However, you can get caught in an idea or a concept that because you're aware of something, then that means you've mastered it. Because you've learned something and maybe can even teach it to other people, that means that you've integrated it. And so when you are badly behaved, it's almost like a shock to your system. Your ego goes, wait, but I should know better. Like I know this stuff because I've been, I've read about it a lot or I maybe even teach it. But if you haven't actually integrated it, then you have self-awareness without the commensurate growth and maturity that goes along with it. And we wanted to talk a little bit about some ways that that shows up. How, do, how can we be self-aware without having commensurate maturity? And how can we avoid, avoid having that happen to us? How can we make it so that we don't simply mitigate our bad behavior by being able to acknowledge it or watch it happen? And how do we not say that we should have transcended something simply because we are aware of its existence and that we've learned it? I think it manifests itself in a lot of different ways. I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind for people who are so there's this there's this term that we've thrown around and we've used between the two of us. I'm not sure if we mentioned it on the podcast or not, but and, and it's not a term we came up with. It's a term that is out there in the world. There's this notion of a social justice warrior, someone who uh, feels like there are they're aware of major problems in the world, whatever those problems might be. And it's their personal mission or job to really make other people aware of those problems. And in fact, find solutions for those problems. And I think that on the surface sounds like a really great idea. And it, it actually is a really great idea. You're aware of maybe something happening in another country, an injustice that's happening, and you want to bring that to light. You want to showcase this to the world and help try to solve that problem, help try to get things fixed in the world that you see as injustices. From my perspective, with social justice warriors, that's not how it shows up. It doesn't show up from my perspective, often in a healthy way. Now, some people are, are going about things healthy, but often I see it coming, there's this sense of awareness of an injustice happening inside of a country, inside of maybe their own country, or inside of a social dynamic, and there's some awareness around that, but it's not a complete awareness. It's a partial awareness because there's not maturity enough to deal with it. And I'm not saying this specifically to just millennials. I think they're any age group, so I don't want to think if you're a millennial listening, we're just picking on your generation I think any generation can have this. Anybody at any age can have this. It's The point is, awareness needs to come with maturity. Awareness does not equal personal growth. Awareness does not equal the big picture of everything, always. I think maturity gives you a sense of maybe the things you're not aware of. And that's really the key is, what are you not aware of in the midst of your awareness? That's the distinction here. Yeah, absolutely. I, and the term social justice warrior is a derogatory term as a general rule. I mean, that's how I've almost exclusively seen it be used. And the reason why is because the social justice warrior, when they find a cause, they end up becoming bullies themselves. They find everybody who is on the other side of this issue, of this perceived grievance, and then they'll dogpile that person. They'll become a bully in order to solve a problem. And, you know, bullying doesn't really ever solve anything except for create more problems. And so there's what you were talking about, this desire to help, this ob observing an injustice and wanting to do something about it. That's the healthy version of what we're talking about. That would be where the maturity would lead this person eventually. But in the meantime, if they don't have that commensurate maturity, then it ends up showing up as things like bullying. I think another way that awareness without maturity shows up is I've had friends who have been teachers in internet marketing. Uh, they've been people who have been coaches and they have taught a lot of development principles They've taught coaching principles, like you know, basically life principles to help people get to the next phase of their life. And then when they hit something that's really tough for them, all of a sudden they just break down. And I remember, I remember having a conversation with somebody who was dealing with a lot of envy for someone else. They were very jealous and envious that this person was given higher status and that every time this other person talked that everybody would stop and listen to them. And this person felt like that was owed to them because they were a coach and they were somebody who had done a lot of, you know, what they believed was a lot of development work. And so they're the person whose opinion should be really, you know, mattering. And it doesn't matter where you're at in your journey. Things like 
you know, jealousy and envy, like petty things are going to surface for you. Like you're not, you know, when you go on a personal development journey, it's not to get to a place where you are never triggered or that you are never dealing with anything that's immature. Like it's really not about like ending the behaviors. It's more about managing the behaviors when they show up and getting through them quickly and being able to show up as your best self most of the time, but you're never going to get there hundred percent of the time. And so something like envy will rear its head. However, what I heard this this person say over and over is, I shouldn't be dealing with this because I teach this stuff. You know, I teach this, so I shouldn't be dealing with it. And I, I found that to be a really interesting perspective because it was like if they were challenged by something that they already cognitively understood, then that should have meant that they never had to deal with it again because that automatically equ- equated integration, as if simply being able to understand the concept to the point of repeating it back to somebody else or teaching somebody else in an understandable way, that that itself meant that they had integrated it, that they had come to a full, not just knowledge, but they had received wisdom from it, that they had received, a, they had come to a place of like, you know, that I'm never going to have to deal with this myself. So that's another way that awareness can show up and not equal growth. Growth is hard. Growth is not simply understanding concepts. In fact, I've observed people who have done extraordinary personal development in their life and never have read a single personal development book. They've never picked up a specific tool. They just did the work. They did the hard work of every time they showed up in a bad way, they observed how they were impacting others. They reevaluated whether or not they wanted to show up that way. And then they, over time, changed their behavior and their cognition to match the behaviors they wanted and the impact they wanted. And they did that just on their own. So one of the things that development tools do for us is they help us go on a quicker, like it it helps accelerate the process. It helps it go faster because you have some tools to implement quickly and it doesn't have to just all be throwing spaghetti at the wall or just trying to figure it out clunky yourself. These personal development tools help speed up the process, but they aren't the process in and of themselves. Like just learning personal development tools, just learning how they are, like how they work, that doesn't equate having done the work. And the work means like like creating a relationship with your ego that acknowledges that you are going to show up bad sometimes, like at not your best self. And being able to hold space for your ego and being able to deal with your ego and being able to, you know, like go, okay, well, I guess I was pretty lame back there. (laughs) And how do I, how do I make peace with that and not demonize everyone around me and not create justifications? So I think that's the other way that awareness can show up without actually being growth is by having a full knowledge, but not necessarily having the work to create wisdom. What do we mean by wisdom when it comes to awareness? We're talking about maturity with your awareness, combining this awareness, the sense of, okay, I see what's going on here with a sense of maturity, tethering it to maturity. And we hinted at this earlier, but I want to hit this point home. Awareness is mature when it's aware of its limitations, the limits of what you are able to take in. In other words, the area that you're aware of in your life is never going to be complete. And I think that's part of the maturity process is knowing there are things that I don't know yet that I'm not taking into account. I'm making decisions upon, I'm deciding things about personal growth and looking at the world through this lens, but there's got to be something out of my frame. And saying that to yourself, just tagging that there's probably stuff I'm not seeing, it allows you to hold more space, it allows you to slow down and not make so many quick judgments about maybe people or other things. And I think this can help your personal growth journey. You're going to show up better when you're not conflating this idea that just because you're aware of what's going on, that equals, oh, I've grown, I've arrived, and now I know what's going on, and now I'm at the top of the mountain, and there's nowhere else to go. I'm here now at this point. I think generally when we become aware that there's something outside of our frame is because we got bit by that at one point, or we experienced something positive that we never anticipated would be positive. We came in with assumptions, and then the experience showed that our, you know, expressed to us that our assumptions were wrong. And because we were able to recognize, oh, I guess I guess I didn't have all the pieces of information because if I had all the pieces of information, I'd feel about that thing like I do now. But I felt about 
I felt differently about it before. When you have a moment when you just kind of realize, yeah, I guess I, I guess I didn't know that whole situation fully. We now understand that there is always more to know. You cannot rest into the idea that you just know. There's more to know in almost every situation. And of course, I, I feel like wisdom is the ability to understand, you know, where you're, not just where your own shortcomings are, because that's, of course, what we called self-awareness was recognizing your shortcomings, but also recognizing the impact it has on other people. This idea of being self-aware and then giving yourself a pass for it, going like, well, you know, I can behave badly as long as I know I'm behaving badly, doesn't show a lot of compassion to other people. <laughs> like it now becomes their problem. Like I did everything I was supposed to do. You know, the, the G.I. Joe fallacy. Now, you know, and knowing's half the battle. Well, no, knowing is very rarely half the battle. Sometimes knowing is half the battle, but most of the time it's not. And so the G.I. Joe fallacy ends up influencing the rest of this, which is knowing is a very small part of the battle. And now correcting the behavior or becoming a better version of yourself or doing the work to transcend the behavior shows a lot more compassion to other people. And it shows that maturity, that wisdom of applying the knowledge, not just simply having the knowledge. So... For the most part, there's this there's this phenomenon that I think will probably end up playing out not just, I mean, I don't think it's just among millennials. I don't want to make it sound like we're picking on millennials when we talked about a self-awareness that doesn't come with maturity. Most millennials are quite young, so there's not really an anticipation of maturity. Maturity happens over time. And if we're really into development and growth, we can accelerate that process, but we still are fairly limited with like what are what are the neurobiological you know steps or circuits that still need to be open or how is our biology helping keep us at a certain point of maturity <laughs> just because of our age and how we're wired so there's no anticipation or ex- excuse me expectation that people that are young are supposed to be super mature just because they have self-awareness but i think this phenomenon happens not just with millennials i think it happens with other generations like we just mentioned and it's it's something to be aware of. It's something to recognize. Just because you have complete mastery over a concept, just because you can understand it well enough to even explain it to another person, doesn't mean that you've done the work to fully embody it. And just because you're aware of your bad behavior doesn't mean that that's enough to mitigate it. Like that's when the work starts. That's not when the work ends. Yeah, as an example with the millennials, we, it sounds like we might be picking on them. But the question I ask myself as we're talking, what do people that are of that generation see? What are they aware of that I might not be aware of? You know, just because it's not in my awareness doesn't mean it's not something they have awareness of on their end. And so I ask myself, okay, maybe there's something on that side. I look at that and I say, well, maybe they don't have maturity connected to awareness. Some of them, some people in that generation. But maybe I'm missing some of that picture. I'm going meta on that and asking myself, maybe I'm not fully aware of what I don't know here. So I'm holding space for that. I'm holding space for that in my own self. Not only that, but it feels like that's a leap in technology. If a whole generation of people have come online to be self-aware at a younger age, that means they have access to a technology that previous generations, it took a long time for them to get there. It's kind of like we didn't get iPhones until we were in our you know, late 20s, early 30s. But a kid that was born in the, that's a millennial, got an iPhone possibly very young. So what tech, what, what's this tool going to end up creating itself? This higher concept or this higher ability to have self-awareness, you know, we see that as them trying to mitigate responsibility sometimes if it doesn't come with maturity. But it's like, but they're the first generation to really get that, to really have that just handed to them. So how's that going to play out? And that's kind of exciting. It's kind of exciting to see what that entire generation is going to do with a new technology that was given to them much younger. They might have massive accelerated growth because they have that. And it might at the same time be something that's an impediment, but we don't know because we haven't seen it play out. So I'm just really curious to see how that self-awareness is going to end up impacting the whole generation. But regardless, I mean, I'm a Gen Xer. I'm not a millennial. And I've seen myself do what we're talking about. I've seen myself go, oh, I should have that handled. Like, you know, I teach that stuff. I should totally have it handled. Well, I I don't. (laughs) Like there's, 
contexts and situations where I still flip out and behave badly. And it doesn't matter what we talk about on this podcast. I'm still not, you know, I'm not, I have, I'm not complete. I am still on my journey. So being able to recognize that outside of the conversation of generations, which which helped illustrate the point, but isn't really the point. The point is no matter who you are, be a, be on the watch for this. Be aware of this and just, just find avenues and aspects in your life where you can observe this behavior happening and then maybe start to program yourself to go, oh, here's an opportunity to work on myself as opposed to it's okay if I do that because I know I'm doing it. So what do you think? We want to hear from you. You can leave a comment or ask a question directly below this podcast on the comment area over at personalityhacker.com. We want to hear your voice. We want to have your voice added to the discussion here around this idea of awareness, not equaling personal growth. Have you seen this come up for yourself? Have you seen yourself grow through this? What has been your experience? What are some of your observations in other people? We invite you to come over and leave a comment, ask a question. You can also join our community of like minds that's growing every day. More and more people join. It's over at facebook.com forward slash personality hacker or twitter.com forward slash personality hack. If you enjoyed this podcast, you can subscribe to us on iTunes and various Android platforms. And if you are feeling particularly generous, we request that you leave us a rating review on iTunes. That really helps us out, helps cross promote us and puts us higher in their charts. Personal growth is near and dear to our hearts. And those are the topics we love to talk about here. So if you have a personal growth topic that you think would be a great podcast topic, let us know. Send us an email, leave us a message and let us know what kind of topics you want to hear around personal growth and personal development. We'd love to tackle some of those issues. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. We'll talk with you on the next Personality Hacker Podcast. Personality Hacker.